Good morning, everyone. It's Education Week. Welcome to a special episode and a special week of Spanning the Need. Seeing is believing, effectiveness of face masks and disinfecting. Today's episode, we're going to talk a little bit about disinfecting. We're also going to talk about masks, testing different types of masks on the most effective materials, talking about them and discussing what's best for the kids, students, and staff going back to school. It's time to prove what works and what doesn't work. Now, today I have two special guests that are going to be able to help me. I have Mr. Ralph, science guy from OWL Children's Center for Technology and Science in downtown Youngstown. And I have Tim Stranick, a health and spa safety specialist at Youngstown State University. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me. Oh, thanks for having us, yeah, Tim. Thanks, hey, yep, thanks. Yep, it was great. And so let, there's a lot to talk about. And thank you for joining me today. Kind of a different time that we're looking at this year just because of where we are in today's society and when we're going back to school. So we want to talk about safety, about our students, our staff, and how we affect everything. But before we do that, let's talk about what you guys do and kind of give us a rough of what you do and, and how you got there. I'll start with Mr. Ralph. So Anthony, again, thanks for, for having us on. And, and we at OWOW um, strive to provide science in every manner possible to all our families in the Valley. Um, if anybody's been into the museum, we have over about 60 uh, exhibits uh, to provide STEM-based activities uh, to all of those students, families, schools, uh, and the community. Uh, my job there as director of education is to make sure that uh, the facilitation and everything that goes uh, as planned, right? Uh, and then to provide that sort of little uh, wildtastic experience to all of those students, whether it's in-house and utilizing uh, the exhibits in the museum or it's out of house and taking sort of that museum experience out to the school or you know to your uh, to your event or wherever it may be so I know um, Tim and I have worked together on many many different occasions in it and the partnership with uh, YSU helps my job and helps make what I do very very simple so you know it's it's nice to be around people that are way more educated than I am uh, because then I can provide a little bit of an extra wildtastic experience. Uh, I just want to say thanks again, Tony, for having us. Um, my name is Tim Strenick. I am uh, the Associate Director now of, of Health and Safety at YSU. Um, obviously, before March, I mean, my job obviously was a little different. So one thing that we've, we've learned over the last few months is we have to adapt. So my job has shifted into, um, into providing uh, disinfectant, uh, other supplies for uh, um, coronavirus safety over the last few months. So we've been busy with that. So we're busy here at YSU getting uh, offices ready uh, to return, classrooms ready. We're distributing hand sanitizer, which we'll talk about today, uh, disinfectant. Uh, we're, we're, we're distributing face coverings. Um, but I've been at YSU for about 12 years. Uh, my background is I have a degree in uh, bachelor's in chemistry and chemical engineering. Uh, one, I am also a certified industrial hygienist. So what I do now for a living is, is safety. So safety obviously has changed. Everything has changed in the last six months, especially safety. Um, we'll talk about today different things like these face coverings, uh, masks. Um, but other things I've done, I, I work with Mr. Ralph from OWL probably for the last what, 10 years or so. Uh, we've done Silly Sign Sunday. Uh, again, kind of sad we're not going to be able to do that this year, but we'll be back next year. Virtual. We're going to do it virtual oh, this year. Stuff. Absolutely. So you're going to see a lot of digital stuff happening, and I think that that's, that's the path we're heading down, right? Right. Yes. Like so, what we're doing now. But Mr. Ralph and I, have, we've, we've gotten together for many years doing camps. We did a virtual camp uh, dealing with some of the stuff we're going to talk about today with the kids this past uh, couple of week or two ago. Again, so again, thanks for having me. I, I appreciate it. And as you know, it, the camera will change a little bit that they are six feet. Actually, I think they're eight feet away. Yeah, we're, they're, they're, they're eight, they're eight feet away from cameras. So let, let's talk a little bit about what's going on in. We know that there are very few supplies for cleaning, sanitation and disinfecting. So how have you been able at Youngstown State to manage that, Tim, because of the short uh, supply of, I mean, you're looking at wipes, you're looking at a variety of different other disinfecting as well as hand sanitizer. So just give me a brief uh, thing on what you guys are doing at Youngstown State University as a college to help prepare for students, staff, and faculty to come in. 
Sure. So we've, we've come back in phases. So we've gotten our offices back together. Um, it was hard to get a lot of supplies at the beginning. Um, so basically the priority is to get uh, hand sanitizer and disinfecting uh, solutions out to departments along with paper towels. Wipes were very difficult to, to find. They've been easier to find in the last month or so. Uh, we make sure departments have uh, face coverings. Um, uh, faculty and staff are required to have their own, but we supply these for, for visitors or students who don't have them, so we're required to uh, wear that. What so kind of mask have, was that? What kind of mask was that? Disposable face face mask. It's not a medical, uh, medical mask. It's just, I don't know if you can see it very well, but it's just a disposable face mask. Um, so these are things we're supplying to the departments just to make sure there's no excuse on campus. Um, everyone is required to have a face covering. Uh, if they have a medical uh, reason not to, they can have a face shield and you can see that very well. But we've been working with our procurement department to, to uh, sources from various suppliers. Um, we're getting better at it. We, we're still learning a lot. Again, that's one thing that we've, we've learned is we're, we have to be able to adapt. But we're doing the best we can to keeping our our students, our faculty, our staff safe. Uh, we're focusing on getting classrooms ready for this week. So we have about 400 classrooms that are going to be active. Hand sanitizer, uh, one gallon bottles, depending on upon the size of the classroom, we might have more. We're gonna have surface disinfectant uh, in every classroom and along with that paper towels. Um, and then there's signage everywhere saying, keep your distance. Uh, there's gonna be hand washing stations. Um, I mean, it's, it's just incredible the way that, that, that the university has responded to, 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 this, uh, to this crisis. Well, and, and, that's, and that's a great point. And we know that uh, you guys are doing a lot. I mean, it's unknown changing day by day. So if one thing happens now, something may change in three weeks. Or as, we've, as I've worked with you before, Tim, something can change in less than a week. Sure. So, and, and that's one thing I think that this has taught us. We have to be able to over adapt and over adapt or uh, adapt quickly. Um, again, like I said, mo most of my, my job was not really focused on on, on this before, but now I, I would say at least fifty percent of my position here has been devoted to to the response to the to the COVID nineteen crisis. Not much, not much. What you can do in a short period of time when we just get kind of all thrown into this. So, so let's talk face masks, face coverings face shields. There are probably approximately eight different terms to talk about. So we are going to be talking about the different types, how they work, and some face covering demos. So people understand what are the best masks to use in what situations. Sure, so sure. So I'll leave that up to you and uh, Mr. Ralph. Just go ahead and start it up. Okay, so let me let me lead this one off, to, Tony. Uh, just just making a small note here. It's it's great that you had us on. You know, right after um, we just finished up a literal manufacturing camp with the YWCA and all of uh, the young ladies locally here, uh, specifically on a theme of biomedical engineering. And Tim was able to help these young ladies. Uh, number one, get interested in the biomedical engineering field, whether in whatever capacity it may be. Uh, and then we were able to uh, hand in hand help them understand the differences between, you know, what a face mask without a filter can do, what a face mask with a filter can do, you know, just may maybe putting your shirt up. We literally allowed them to use critical thinking skills with an amount of materials that were very, very minimal. So I, oh, wow, you know, we have so much donated and upcycled and recycled material. And thank you to, you know, everybody that's ever done that for us. We had all of this material at the museum. So my job was to provide those students with a little bit of, you know, some material that they could then generate a filter and a mask and then test it out. So to start off, I mean, literally the, the most basic mask that you can get is something either in the way of a, a bandana. We've seen people wear bandanas. Uh, my grandfather used, used them as a hanky, right? You used to keep them in your back pocket. So, um, to, you know, moving up a little bit of a notch where you literally cut a piece of a t-shirt, right? And you can cut a piece of a t-shirt up and literally put this over your face. Now, this can become a mask. Now, obviously, if you've got a beard like myself, the beard probably helps you immensely. But this piece of t-shirt that I've cut can literally be a face mask. Now, can it be a shield? That's the test, right? And one of the tests that we test 
or we do to perform whether or not a mask is appropriate or can do what it's intended to do is a simple match test. So if we lit a match right in front of my face, so Tim's gonna, or I can, I can light the match here. Yep. If I light the match and I am able to blow out the match, then obviously the face mask probably isn't doing its job because if I sneeze or if I cough, then all of those droplets that are coming from my body, whether I'm infected or not, are going to infect somebody else. So let's give it a try, right? Simple piece of t-shirt cut with some holes in it. Let's see if this works. Oh, now see, probably not the best face mask to use. Tony, go ahead, say what you're yeah, gonna say. And, and I think that's a great point is, and, and what I think people and our viewers need to understand is, the mask needs to cover your entire face, including the bottom part of your beard. Absolutely, absolutely. So that's just a simple t-shirt. Now, obviously, one of the things that's being addressed now is people want something that's comfortable. They want something that's fashionable. They want something that maybe is very, very conventional for them to not have to worry too much about. Well, And can breathe. And you can breathe. That's a huge part of it, right? So I'm going to upgrade to a little bit more of a mask. This is a material mask. It has a bungee cord on it. I purposely purchase this mask because one of the issues that the girls at the camp were dealing with was when you talk, your mask has a tendency to fall. And I'll tell you what, when I was, you know, when I would have a discussion with somebody, when I was talking with them and their mask started to fall down, I, I started stepping back. I stepped away and I thought, I need a mask to make sure that I don't make somebody else feel uncomfortable if my mask starts to fall. And then there's the whole issue of if I'm touching things and then I'm touching my mask, and then I'm pulling my mask up, and then I'm touching something else. You're, you're involving so many different consequences with your hands. So you want something that's not gonna fall. So this mask literally does the same thing. It wraps over my ears, it's covering most of my beard, and then the bungee, I literally can cinch to my neck. Now when I'm talking, my mask doesn't fall, I don't have to touch my mask. I don't have to touch my face. Now. We're gonna do the match test again, right? Does the, the mask or the face covering do its job? So I'm gonna do the test again. I'm gonna blow through the mask and see if I can blow out the match. Can't do it, right? I'll probably end up passing out because I can't do it. The point, not only have I covered all of those terms, it's protecting everyone around me. It's covering my whole face. It's not moving down as I talk. It's very comfortable. And I have the ability to breathe if I needed to. What you want to do when you take a mask off, if I have to take my mask off, you want to grab from here. And Tim will allude on this a little bit more. But proper usage of the mask, taking it off and putting it on is so very important. You shouldn't be touching this area. You should be grabbing from here, pulling it off, and literally disinfecting it if it's something that you're going to wear over and over again. Those are so many important things that need to be remembered. You can buy the greatest mask that protects you, but if you don't use it appropriately, it's not going to serve its purpose. What kind, just for our viewers to go over that, what kind of mask is this? And this what, just what material is, is it? So, so it's cotton material. Um, it has the ability to put a filter in it if I wanted to. Just little pouches here. It's a bungee cord with a little bead at the very end that cinches that bungee cord that I'm able to pull up to my chin and it literally hitches from here. A lot of masks will hitch around your ear and they'll pull on your face. So many different things. And, and again, these are just two. That little t-shirt that you can make, pretty appropriate if you're gonna be away from somebody and you want something real quick. But again, not gonna be effective if you cough or you sneeze. Now we move up a little bit and you can move into the bandana or into a cotton material type of mask with bungee cord or a string or a strap with a little bit of a cinching that can get you your mask close to your face or to your beard. Now, Tim is gonna talk about more industrial type masks that are provided to industrial workers or- Right, and let me, let me say this. Let's, it, can we do a quick test with the bandana? Because sure. we see a lot of people around just walking anywhere with a bandana that goes across their face and it comes down here and they keep it at the bottom of their neck. And we know from bandanas that they're very thin. 
Right. Uh, and and if we could do a quick test with the bandana to show people, and I think right. that's that's what we yeah. really want to do is fold it the right the way you like a normal person would would fold a bandana, so we can test this and to really show what a bandana. Because you're like, oh, bandana works. No, it doesn't. Right. It, right. It, it's very thin and. And can we and can we see through this bandana? Because that's what I hear. You could see through bandanas. Yeah. So that's exactly uh, what you just said, Tony. I, I watched the national news. I forget what channel the other day, but there was a they were citing a study done at a university university out west, and they said the masks do work. And I'll talk about different kind of, of face coverings masks today. But the rule of thumb is, if you can see through it, um, it's probably not a good choice to use as a as a face covering. But you asked, so we're just going to take the bandana we have here. And, and I think another important thing to, to, to note here is I'm not a doctor. I'm not a, I, I'm not a, a know everything type of person. I don't think I think Tim would agree. We, we do our jobs to the best that we can do them. I think ultimately, Anthony, when, when we're talking about the mass, it's kind of like talking about a seatbelt. You know, the seatbelt serves a purpose, right? You put it on your car to reduce the risk. So the bandana didn't work the way that it was intended. That pretty much was the same exact thing as we did about two two um, two masks ago. Right. They're sure. they're right. not good to wear. Right. If, and now, let, yeah, I mean that's just not good. It it serves a small purpose. It may cover your face, but does it do what it's intended to do? And I think going back to the seatbelt thing, seatbelts may feel uncomfortable. Some people wear them under their arm. Some people wear them over their arm. But the purpose is it reduces your risk of if you're in an accident, maybe death, maybe serious injury. The masks are there to protect you and reduce your risk. Now, are all of them going to protect you better than others? Absolutely not. And we're looking at that right now. The T-shirt failed. The bandana failed. I have a mask that sort of worked, but is it going to be the most appropriate? We're going to go through and we're going to see other ones that technically have more specifications to them and are and, and can filter out more of those those germs and those viruses and, and all of those things that are in they're intended to do. Specifically, you see them being worn by either, you know, in the manufacturing field, a, a carpenter or a metal worker, you know, making sure that they don't breathe in those toxicity fumes and things. For the medical field, they don't want to breathe those germs. If you're a carpenter, you don't want to breathe in all of that wood or that dust. Right here, Tim has got a medical mask that's worn by med medical professionals, right? And what, like, like Ralph said, a lot of times when you wear this, you should you should put it on sort of like this and, and be very careful how you touch it. So now what I, I see a lot of people wear this. This is great. This is actually a one-time use mask. After you use it one time, you should throw it away and get another one. So that's rather they're not really a good option. So an option like like Mr. Ralph had with the mask over there, with, or the other one, the one that actually worked, mm -hmm. that mask is really nice because the best thing you could do is is take it home every day and you and you wash it so it's nothing nothing more nothing worse than not having a mask is wearing a dirty mask every day because think about when you wear the mask if you cough if you sneeze you know it, you, you want to keep it clean so one thing i, I word of caution i have for this mask is i see this a lot in public i see this a lot let's see i see that a lot people think they shouldn't have their nose covered but having your nose uncovered is just as bad as not wearing a mask so people should have their have their nose and their mouth covered or I see a lot of this so if somebody takes a break from wearing a mask they do this so now is, is that a problem I mean, yeah so it's it's a big problem so when they they're actually they could be germs on their neck they could be putting it back on their face and they could be causing an issue be it that way so you should never you should never do this with a mask when you have a mask on like this is I should say a face covering rather you should always take it off by the ear loops <laughs> take it off and then this is disposable so you, you put it in the trash but if it were a mask like Ralph pad that you could reuse I'd be very careful where I set this um, I try to be to handle it gently and handle it like this to keep to keep germs or microorganisms from getting on that mask so again the way you wear it um, don't wearing it on your neck taking it on and off putting it on appropriately taking it off appropriately is, is important uh, because you can transfer germs so if your hands are dirty again you should handle your mask with with clean hands either wash them for 20 seconds with soap and water or use hand sanitizer before you put the mask on and then and you be uh, you be cautious about where you set it if you want to use it later 
this is my my personal mask. I don't know if you can see it. Um, yeah, I'll show it kind of just so there's Batman. Batman. Yeah, it kind of looks like Batman. It looks like yeah, exactly. So, but inside of it is a is a filter. So that filter I change I change out almost almost daily. So when I put this on, I take it. I don't handle it from the front of the mask. I handle it usually from back here. But the nice thing about this, it has ear loops. And it has a has a strap in the back, so my mask does not does not fall off. But one thing about this mask, it's a great mask. One bad thing about this mask, and I'll show it the other other uh, other face coverings here. But I don't know if you can see it right there. These little ports. Now, the only issue with the study done out west, and I forget the name of the university, was was these little, they're like little exhalation ports. So when I breathe in, um, they close, so all, all my air comes through the mask. And when I breathe out, they open. Now, the problem with that is it's protecting me, but it's not protecting Ralph or it's not protecting the people around me. So when I see people on public, so wearing, this is a N95 mask. Again, this is a mask that only should be worn by medical professionals or people with, with um, or, or people who work in certain industries. So this is, we call this an N95 mask. So what, I asked Mr. Ralph, what is, we talked about this earlier, what is, what does N mean? Not. 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 So, so when you see N95, it's not oil resistant. And the 95 has a special meaning too. It means this mask, if you wear it properly, again, this is considered uh, you have to be spitted with for this by a, by a, by a trained industrial hygienist uh, to make sure it fits. Because once you put a mask on, uh, you have to be very careful because it can restrict your breathing. Like like Ralph said, we are. Not, I'm not a doctor. We're not doctors, but I'm an industrial hygienist, which means I can fit people for masks. So when you wear this mask, so I'll put this on. Yeah, this is an N95 mask. You should put it on a certain way, and it should fit like that. Now, can yeah. we test it with the with the match? Sure. Because I, I think the idea I think the idea is is we want to try and test to show people we're we're not doctors we're not medical but we're showing what we. Now I don't know if the camera's picking this up, but Tim's blowing, and you can see the filter moving out on that circular nodule on the front of that mask it's moving so tim's breath is is still coming out but it's it's literally moving outside of the mask it's not going towards the match so it worked right so another like i said another thing you saw on my my, my personal mask is these this exhalation port this mask this is an n95 which I don't, I don't think i said what the 95 means the uh n means not oil resistant again that's that goes back to the industrial uses of the mask um 95 means that it will filter out 95% of the particles in the air around you that are 0.3 microns in diameter or above. So the really small particles will, will still get through. And just to give an idea, again, in part of the translation and the education for the students were for these young ladies was not a lot of, uh, you know, the general public knows what, what a micrometer is or a micron is and how big that may be. But just to give you an idea, your hair is probably one one hundredth bigger than that micron or that micrometer. So even if you pulled out a hair, the the micrometer that you know droplet that Tim's talking about is a hundred times even smaller than that. So you're looking at tiny part. You can't even see them. That's how small they can be. So I mean, just to give you an idea of of that word and what that means, that's how easily those things can work their way into that filter or work their way into, you know, a beard. I mean, they can be in my beard. So, again, the point of the, this exhalation port, port, this is horrible to protect other people. So usually if in a sterile environment, this would not work. So this is more an occupational use. If this, I mean, you could use this. I've seen people wear these in public, but it's not a good idea for people to wear these in public because it will protect them. But they say if they're in they have the coronavirus or COVID-19, it will not protect the people around them. So you're better off probably wearing this than you are, are this. So there's a big, there's a big, big, and that's my personal opinion. There's been some studies to back that up. But again, this will send out contaminated pumps. If I am, if I have COVID-19, this will send out um, infectious water, infectious droplets into the air. 
So that's a big deal. So I want I want your viewers to know that you know, this this does make a difference. Again, you medical professionals will wear N95s without this port. So, um, so real quick, I, I wanted to add too. So when Tim said the water droplets, so think about this for a second. If your mask gets sort of moist or filled with water or breath, or sometimes if you you're you know you have water that comes from your mouth, and your mask gets you know filled with that water or those water droplets and then you take that mask off and you set it down on a counter now you've just transferred whatever it is from you to now to your hands to the mask to the table and there was a simple demonstration that i did with the students i literally gave them toothpicks in a little plastic baggie and i threw glitter in there and i didn't tell them what the glitter was for and I told them just to reach in, grab the toothpicks, and spell out a simple word like camp. I think we had them spell out camp. And all the whilst they were doing this, they were, they were asking, Mr. Tim, Mr. Ralph, why, did, why is there glitter all over the place? And I said to them, I said, I failed to tell you that when I packaged these, I, I had a cold. I had germs. And the, the glitter was the representation of the germs that I had. So now that they've reached in and grabbed those toothpicks with the glitter on them, now glitter's everywhere. And in the process of me telling them to spell that word out, I had them go grab a piece of paper or I had them go gl grab a glass of water. And now they've taken those, the glitter was everywhere. It was on the door handle. It was on the carpeting. It was on the glass of water. It was over on the door handle from the room. It was easily for them to understand how quickly those glitter, that glitter was a representation of germs were transferred. How quickly and easily. Now there's glitter everywhere, which were the germs. Germs will get everywhere. They can go and move themselves very quickly from person to person, from countertop to, it's so incredibly like frustrating sometimes to understand, like if we're not using everything appropriately, how easily it will still be to transfer. So even not cleaning your mask, coughing and going, okay, well I protected myself and you set your mask down. Now you have to disinfect that area because all of those germs are still going to get spread no matter what. You have to get a new mask, right? You absolutely yeah. have to get a new mask. Well, I mean, it, we talk about we talk about the different types of masks and what is good for when you go to the grocery store, when you're out in public, social distancing, uh, and, and stuff like that. I see uh, a lot of this, Tony. A couple of times at the grocery store, just this. Now, this right here, absolutely the most inappropriate thing to do, right? Because we just tested a piece of T-shirt out. It didn't work. Well, and, and that's like the normal fabric that I have. It fits right over everything. And I can't, I can go like this, but I can't feel when I, when I exhale, I can't feel the breath of mine, which shows that I'm protecting myself and I'm protecting the person that's near me, even within six or eight feet. And I think that this, and this is fabric, this is complete uh, cotton polyester mask. Do we have any types of those masks? We do. We actually have one right here. Let's, um, let's, so, show, let's show people that one. Okay, so specifically what you were just saying, the cotton, the polyester. Now, this is the mask that we have at the museum. Now, unfortunately, you know, OWAL's closed physically to the public until May of 21. And we did that with, with thought. You know, the board and, and, and staff decided that at early on, before 19 even blew up, we were we were decided upon, listen, we're going to make sure we focus on May of 21 and making everything that OWOW does and provides to the community that more effective. Whatever we didn't do prior to 19, we're going to get better at. Whatever we were doing that was working, we're going to even get better at. We're going to make it more wildtastic. So this is provided to all of the staff that's still at OWOW right now because we're producing stem sacks. We provide these at the desks. We take our temperatures every day, but just like you said, cotton, polyester. I can put this on, very easy to do. I pull it down a little bit, but I will say a little less comfortable than the mask that I do have. And I can tell when I'm talking, this moves up on my face. It's moving near my eyes. So I constantly have to do this. I'm gonna have to pull it down a little bit, right? But the match test, I think you'll see we're gonna protect ourselves.
That's a great example. I mean, that, right. that shows that you can hear yourself blowing. So it's not like you're you're just going, you're you're blowing, or you're right. either even if you're you're spitting or you got monocles coming out of your mouth, it still shows that nothing affects that light. Right. Or that and, match. and I will say though, again, there's certain things that people they want it to feel comfortable. I will say. This does not feel as comfortable, even, even with that material, that t-shirt material does not feel comfortable. And it was moving up on my face. So that could have been partially because of my beard, could have been partially because of the straps being a little bit more tight. But again, we're doing the best that we can with what we've got. And that was one of the issues that was addressed with the students was use your critical thinking skills and try to factor in everything that you think about a mask and what it does do and what it doesn't do. And let's really focus on what it doesn't do. Does it not feel comfortable? Does it not provide, you know, we haven't even touched upon the universality. You know, if, if I don't speak or if I'm not, if I'm hearing impaired, if I'm wearing this mask, nobody can see my mouth, right? I have to either, I have to pull my mask down so you can see my mouth or I have to hand signal to somebody or we're in a little bit of a, a little bit of a pickle, you know, especially with not having a universality about the mask, right? So this needs to be transparent almost. And where do we go with that? You know, how do we make our mask transparent and still effective in providing safety for us and the people around us? Yeah, that, that brings that brings a lot of what we're going through in all these different masks and just what how they work and what doesn't work so people can understand what's going on. And I think here's a great fact. And I just, I saw a survey by um, restaurant owners, okay, it just came out, they pulled that 75% of the restaurants are open, okay, 47% are operating at 50% capacity. Here's the kicker, over half of those feel that they will close within nine months during this pandemic. That's a huge number. And if the people are not wearing the masks, taking this seriously, I understand. Some people have breathing problems. Some people think that it's a constitutional right, which I disagree with. If you wear a shirt, you wear shoes, you don't wear them, no service. Remember the, the notion that no shirt, no service, no mask, no service. And I, I think there's a lot of science out there. There's been a lot of studies, legitimate scientific studies, to, to back up wearing a mask does prevent through transmission of, of, of the virus of, or any microorganism for that matter. And it does work. So if you're within, if you're six feet away from somebody and you each have a mask on, the chances of you getting the, you know, the coronavirus is almost zero. That's the, 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 the least amount of risk that you can have. So I myself, I mean, I, I base, I try to, I try to look at the science. Uh, I, I like watching Dr. Fauci a lot when he's on the news because he is very scientific and he bases everything he says upon upon scientific fact. And, and the fact is that masks do work. There's scientific evidence to prove that they do work. Um, now, again, should people who have certain health problems like asthma or other issues be cautious? I, mean, I would say, yeah. So, um, but, but they do work in regards to preventing transmission of the virus. Face shields are nice. I've seen people wear face shields in public. Um, Face shields are nice, but think about if you're wearing a face shield, and you're you're protecting yourself, but your air that you're breathing out, or when you're talking or coughing, is still going to move around and get into the air where other people can breathe. So these are not as effective. What's effective is wearing these these together, a combination. So you would see like a, a doctor or a nurse or somebody who works in a hospital wear a mask with a face shield. If you're in public, in my opinion, you don't really need to wear. A map, uh, a face shield, but again, that, that's just another, another, another um, barrier for uh, protection. Um, how does how does, how does how the does face mask, mask, or I should say, the face shield, affect yourself? Because you have that open underneath. So, if I'm spreading germs, I'm spreading it on the plexiglass or the the thing that's covering it. How does that affect? It? Let's let's do a little uh, sample with that to show people. What it is, because a lot of people think that wearing a face mask, or a fa I'm sorry, face shield, is good than wearing nothing, which is true. But you still got to wear something to cover your face. Right. So, I mean, if you're wearing a face shield, I think you know, if, if, if there's particles that are, you know, 
contain the virus, you contain the coronavirus and the air around you, you're still going to be breathing those in. So again, this this what this provide, provides is just a barrier. So so if I'm coughing or if I sneeze, instead of sneezing in the air around me, it's it's going to catch the fascia will catch those water droplets. So again, what we're looking at are, are the droplets of, of moisture from from your from your respiratory system is what's spreading the virus. So again, I don't. This has been proven not to be as effective as wearing a face covering. Uh, some people say, is it better than wearing nothing? I, I mean, I, I don't. I think it provides you another barrier of protection. I, like I said, I think wearing this together is is probably your best your best bet. Um, but again, you said you wanted to do a demo with this. With, with, with yeah, I, so maybe maybe what we could do, Tim, is um, if so, I have the spray disinfectant, right? If I were to spit, spray disinfectant spray at Tim's face right now, okay, two things would happen. One, he'd probably blink, right? Because this is utilized for cleansing of a table. But essentially what would happen is the liquid definitely wouldn't dry. There's nothing to sop up the liquid, right? So essentially it would trickle down his face mask. Now, now from that instance, he's got to do a couple of things. I got to clean off my face mask. So how do I clean my face mask off? Do I wipe it with my hand? Do I get a cloth out of my pocket? You know, now think about that in the reverse manner where if the, the, the water droplets are coming out of his mouth and in, in fact, like dousing the inside of his mask, now he has to do the same thing. He has to clean the inside of his mask and whatever he doesn't clean may drip onto the ground or onto his clothes. I mean, you literally are, it's like the windshield on your car, right? <laughs> You're going to clean the windshield, but there's still going to be residue of the water or the cleaning detergent from the windshield wiper fluid on that windshield. So like he said, the shield of that word, the, the shield part literally is, is what it's doing. It's shielding you, but it's definitely not, it's not filtering anything out. Okay. And it's definitely, if you have a cloth mask, it's not absorbing any of that water, that water droplets or those water droplet materials that are coming from the air, outside of the air or from your person. Um, so I think the best word that we could have used is the combination of the two, right? Um, you know, the football players used to wear helmets until guys started getting mashed in the face. Now the combination of wearing a helmet and a face mask helped those guys from, you know, literally a broken jaw or something of the sort. I think Tim's point was perfectly, you know, alluded to what the face mask can serve as a shield, but combination with a mask and a face shield is a double purpose. And that literally not only doubles up protecting you, but protects other people as well. Um, the, thing, the thing you got to think about is, is the level of risk. So wearing a mask, if we're both wearing a mask, we're six feet apart. The risk of getting, you know, getting infected by the coronavirus is pretty much zero. If we both have face shields on, um, the risk the risk goes risk goes up. So is is this better than nothing? I would say absolutely. Yeah, I mean it does work. So like I said, for some people who can't wear a mask, or some people who have anxiety or have medical issues, this is not a perfect substitute, but it's it's better than better than nothing. Right. And when you talk about safety, you talk about risk. Is is zero risk possible? Usually not. So and, and, Ralph and I were talking about this before we went on this morning is, is it possible to not get exposed or, or I mean, you could lock yourself in your house, never come out for a year. There's still a possibility you can get infected. I mean, so, but what we're doing is we're trying to mitigate that and, and decrease it. That's what wearing the mask is all about. That's what washing our hands, using hand sanitizer. That's what it's all about. Right. And, and I think initially before we stopped on, I think one of the big things that we sort of started to allude to was the amount of information it's being pumped out there, right? We have technology at our, at, our, at our fingertips that can give us information just like that. We literally haven't even gotten to three other masks that Tim has uh, and can show us. We've already gone through six different masks, six different types of masks for everybody across the board to say, well, I need something that's comfortable. Okay, you can tear a piece of t-shirt off. This is comfortable. Um, well, I have a breathing issue and I, I need something that's gonna be away from my mouth. Well, there's the face shield. We covered that too, right? So. We're literally giving you the most amount of information that you can get to help protect you, help protect others, to give you the comfort, to give you this, the, the sanity to know that like there are things that we can do 
and Tim said it, to reduce the risk, right? We wear seat belts to reduce our risk from injury or death. Does it protect us 99, 100, 150? No, absolutely not. There's still that small percentage, but it just reduces the risk. And I think, you know, when we, especially for oh wow and what we deal with in, in, the, in the dynamic of, of the population that we deal with in children, I think ultimately everything that I do consciously revolves around, is this good for my kids? Is this good for the kids that we service? What would the kids do? You know, a lot of children don't have the information. It comes from us, the grownups, the adults. So we have to provide ourselves and, and our children with most the most information that we can and then filter out what we think is best for our own, right? The golden rule teaches us to treat others the way you want to be treated. The platinum rule says treat others better than you would treat yourself. And I want to give every child and every family and every person in this valley the opportunity to give them the most information that they have to provide themselves with that knowledge and that you know, that confidence of, okay, I've got all this. Now I'm just going to take what I need and I'm going to use it for myself. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that I'm okay with it, with myself and my family. And I, I think that's where it alludes to is what's good for you. What's good for you and your family. And, and what do you feel is good for everybody else? I mean, trying to take the selfishness out of, you know, society is extremely hard. I mean, I've, I've, selfishly done things for me and my family. I mean, and it's very hard, especially when you, when you start to get grown and you start to look at things in a different manner. But this right here, what we're speaking of, wearing a mask, takes some selfishness away from ourselves and, and, and allows us to make other people feel comfortable. I want to feel comfortable. I go back to talking about when somebody's mask starts to fall and they're talking to me, I take a couple of steps back. Not because I, I don't respect you. It's just, I want to make sure that if something happens that I don't bring it back to my kids or my family. And that's it's where the safety, <laughs> it's the safety issue. Yes. And, and you, and you try to control what you can control and what you cannot control. You have to adapt. Yep. And I think the masks that we're going through right now have shown what you can use, what you can't use. And I know some people have made some comments and some questions already, which we'll get to here in a couple minutes. Um, are there any other types of masks we should be looking at in general? So again, this is something, this is called, we talked about the N95 uh, and, and the numbers are important like we talked about, but this is an N100. So the difference between this mask and this mask is that this will filter out, not 100%, it will filter out 99.97% of particles that are 0.3 microns uh, in diameter or above. So that's this. This is a much better mask than this mask. And this is something the general public should not be wearing. This is more or less a medical professional. Um, so it means again, it's not resistant to oil. And then here I have a half face piece respirator. You can see the cartridges are pink, which means the, this is a P100. Uh, this is a P100 mask, which means that it can filter out 99.97 percent of the particles. But this is also P means it's slightly oil protective, protective against oil. But this is a half face piece respirator. So this is something you see a medical professional wearing. The general public should not be wearing something like this. This is for a doctor or a nurse, or this is for an industrial type environment. Um, and, you, and Tim, yeah. don't, don't other professions wear that? I think when I did some research, like a painter spraying paint, uh, sure. tell, tell us a little bit about what other people use that mask so people get understanding of of what an individual goes through when wearing that sure so a welder somebody working like a you know, painter anybody in an industrial application can wear the mask now and i'll tell you wearing a mask is not as easy as say oh i'm going to pick this mask up and, and i'm going to wear it so again we see the news all the time we think oh you can just pick up a mask and wear it that's that is untrue even a mask like this uh, uh needs to be what we call fit tested now that has to be done by 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 a professional, uh, industrial hygienist, and you have to be evaluated by a doctor to, to to be sure you could wear a mask. So people wearing these should be very cautious because it can restrict it can restrict your breathing slightly. Um, a mask mask like this, you definitely need a medical evaluation. You need a fit test. You have to make sure you're trained on how to use the respirator. You have to make sure that all this all the equipment works. There's a valve here. You have to know how to wear it, how to clean it. Uh, a lot of times I, I kind of laugh, I get a chuckle when I'm not a chuckle, but I want to, you know, if I'm out in public and I see people wearing different cartridges or I see people wearing this, 
they're wearing the wrong type of cartridge. So this is for particles. This will filter out particles. Sometimes people wear a different cartridge that'll fi filter out organic vapor, which is totally inappropriate for what we're dealing with right now. Now, in an industrial situation, that's different. Um, so again, this is a this must be this must be fitted, uh, and it has to be tested. So I'm not an extreme version of that. This is a full face piece respirator compared to a half face. These are both these each of these masks are my own personal mask. But again, you have to know how to wear this. So again, this cartridge would not be appropriate for small particles. It's that looks like one of those masks that like the apocalypse type movies that you see, or yeah. the ones that the ones that you may see for. Uh, chemical spills or some additional uh, things that people, I've seen some people wear those. I mean, yeah. it's. Uh, yeah, it's not really appropriate for, for this type of situation. Maybe a, a doctor or a nurse working in a, in, in a hospital. Uh, I wear this when I deal with some, some parts of my job, but I'm trained. I have a medical evaluation. Uh, it's fit tested. If you're working around some certain chemicals, you should wear this. So again, there's, there's many different types. I mean, there's another type we call it a papper. If you've seen, if you watch the news, I've seen doctors wear them. Um, it's a it's a mask. It's basically a covering. You that I don't have an example here, but a doctor puts over, and it basically you wear a cartridge on your on your belt, and it takes in air, runs it through a filter, and it runs clean air through positive pressure into your mask. So again, that's easier for a doctor because they're wearing it for long periods of time. Another version of a of a of a of, of, of respiratory protection is what firemen wear. We call it a scuba gear. It's a self-contained breathing apparatus, they bring in their own oxygen supply, but there's a variety of masks out there. So again, my, my, my goal is, is like at the university is we're trying to educate people about different face coverings, about disinfectants. Again, the thing like, like Ralph said is about education and being a good consumer of the information because even said, there's so much information out there. We don't know what's right. We don't know what's wrong. Again, I, I, I have issues when I see people wearing masks in public and they're not really wearing them correctly. Uh, they're wearing them on their neck and you know i don't want to go up and tell people in, pu in public you're not wearing your mask correctly but i feel sometimes i feel like i want to but again it, um our goal today is just people understand there's different types uh again you should always be cautious like i said we're not doctors but you should always be cautious about wearing a face covering but again right now based upon all the scientific evidence it's probably the best thing we could do to protect each other in our community well and i think the I nice thing about it is we can educate when this video goes out, the people that are watching to say, hey, this is what works. And, and I think one thing that maybe we'll add to this is we'll, t uh, we'll give them a, a list of one to five or six of the, of the masks that we went through on the ones that we suggest to the ones that didn't work. So yeah. then we can really mount and really show, hey, this is what works. This is what doesn't. Yeah. And I, and I think, you know, ultimately going back to just a combination of things. So one of the things that we were able to do during um, the STEM camp with the young ladies from the YWCA was we gave them the opportunity. And again, OWOW always preaches about <clears throat> utilizing things that you would find in your own home. So I have this travel spray container, okay? Uh, and it holds an amount of disinfectant that we were able to produce from things that we would commonly find in our own home. So these are things that you can find uh, in your home. And literally, this is something you everybody should or has had in their house at one time is hydrogen peroxide. So what we did to give the ladies in, uh, uh, the ability to produce their own uh, disinfectant, okay, we went out and got what uh, most people would use as hair coloring, hydrogen peroxide, 6%. Now you couldn't use 6% on your hands or your clothes or your body or your person uh, or your face. I know people have used it in their hair, but what happens is it dyes their hair. So if it dyes your hair color, just think what it could happen if, if you left it on your skin. So we would have to dilute that. We need, we need water to dilute things. So this 6% hydrogen peroxide that you can find at a beauty salon, you can find it at Walmart was diluted. Okay. So that we could use it as a disinfectant on our countertops. And I carry this around with me, okay, in my pocket, so that when I'm touching something, I'm disinfecting it. Or when I'm grabbing something, I'm disinfecting it after I'm touching. My keys, my, your keys are one of the dirtiest things in your hand because you're grabbing them all the time. But my point is, using disinfectant and having it around with you, if you have sanitizer, 
right? We can make sanitizer. I think Tim is such a vital and part important part of what YSU is doing now. His his staff and everybody that's surrounding him in this area that we're in is providing such an, an immense amount of productivity and product to YSU because they're the only one providing the the sanitization, the disinfectant, and the sanitizer to these staff and these and these students. If this department wasn't here, I don't know what would happen. I mean, we would have to fend for ourselves and buy our own sanitizer, but his staff and, and this department here is providing it for the whole campus. It's absolutely amazing. So these students here are going to protect themselves many different ways. They're going to wear the mask. They're going to have the disinfectant with them, right? They're going to take care of themselves. So I think there are things that you can do at home as well. If you don't have the ability to go out and buy the sanitizer, these are things that you can make. And we could provide, Tony, your, you know, your viewers with the link to diluting the 6% solution or the 9% solution. Now, once you get higher in percent, you really have to be careful as to making sure that you're diluting it, the, the hydrogen peroxide at a, an appropriate amount of, because you could, you could hurt yourself. It's, it's dangerous. But 6% or even the 3% that you would find that you can brush your teeth with, right? Or now, are you diluting that? that? What are you diluting that with, like water? Just water. Ideally, it would be like Water. Yes. So if you were to buy distilled water, right, the best that you can use, but you could dilute this with just regular tap water. But like Tim says, the most ideal and under circumstance would be to get a uh, distilled water. So again, there's like, there's, there's a variety of things in this thing. Like right. And one thing uh, we're, we're doing here, the health and safety department of YSU is distributing disinfectants to the offices. And then we try to make it a point of, of discussing or, or clarifying in emails and other other communications. Again, it's, it's a, lot, a lot of it's about communication. What's the difference between cleaning, uh, sanitation, and disinfection? And there's, there's a huge difference between each one. And, and, and a lot, I mean, it's it's so wonderful to be able to give, be given that knowledge. You didn't even a grown adult. Like you would think they're pretty similar. Disinfecting something is pretty much the same thing as sanitizing something, which is pretty similar to cleaning. They're really not. They're really, really different. And it is amazing to me. And Tim, this is where the knowledge goes beyond, right? Knowing the difference between something, sanitizing it, and disinfecting it. They can all go hand in hand. And doing all three is great. But cleaning is different than disinfecting. And, and Tim can tell you about that. Yeah, so, so disinfection is what you're doing is you're removing pretty much nearly all. Not, it's impossible to take away all the microorganisms on the surface. But a disinfectant takes away pretty much nearly all the microorganisms. Sanitation basically usually refers to to killing bacteria. And cleaning is just a visible removal of using soap and water of dust, of dirt, or any contaminant on, on a surface. So again, the, the, the term that, that's important, especially today with, with you know with living in the, this area of the coronavirus is disinfection. So there's a variety of cleaners out there. They're on the CDC website, uh, they're usually EPA approved. Um, variety of, of EPA approved it, of cleaners Usually those cleaners contain a mixture of, of different cleaners. One cleaner is isopropyl alcohol. Again, the concentration matters. Usually it's 70%. And like I said, our communication is key. So different disinfectants should need to remain on the surface for different times. And they have to stay on a clean surface. So if there's any dust or dirt, that's going to ruin our disinfection capabilities. So Isopropyl alcohol, excuse me, has a kill time of micro, for microorganisms, which means disinfection, of 30 seconds. So the surface must remain wet for at least 30 seconds or longer to ensure uh, killing of the microorganisms. So real quick, Tony, maybe we could do a demonstration here. So what Tim is basically saying is when you take your disinfectant, you want to make sure that you cover the whole entire area. Well, got to open it up. Not even on. Thank you. 
Ammonium, uh, disinfectants out there. A lot of the wipes have that, so if it's not bleach, uh, this uh, hydrogen peroxide will we'll have to stay on the surface for one minute to ensure proper disinfection. Uh, bleach is a very common disinfectant. Ralph, how, how long do you think bleach has to stay on a surface for disinfection? I would, I would think that bleach would have to stay on a surface for at least a minute. Bleach actually has a longer disinfection time. It's between five and ten minutes, so I would lean more to ten minutes. So if people spray bleach on a surface, it has to stay on there, I would say, for at least ten minutes to ensure proper disinfection. So every, every product is different. Again, like I said, there's so many products out there. I looked at the CDC website with EPA approved disinfectants. There's, hundreds, there's, there's thousands on there. Every company has their own name. Uh, I mean, this picture of different products. Usually you're looking at hydrogen peroxide, a quaternary ammonium solution, isopropyl alcohol, or a, a Clorox, which is usually sodium hypochlorate. Well, and, and, and it's, it's interesting how um, we talked about hand sanitizer and then the disinfecting, how there are multiple reports and recalls of some of the hand sanitizers from over a hundred different um, companies, or I should say products that have been hazardous. So please watch what you're getting, when you're getting, and just look at the CDC website and, and look at different information like that. So, but so I'm going to caution with hand sanitizer, if it contains methanol, do not use it. Or if you see the word denatured on any kind of hand sanitizer, do not use that. Because methanol, uh, usually hand sanitizer contains either ethanol, which is eth ethyl alcohol, or contains isopropyl alcohol. Methanol can, is toxic to human beings, so, so that can readily absorb through your skin, so we should not be using that. Yeah, that's, that's, a, great, that's, a, great, that's a great point. So, But I appreciate you guys taking time. Are you guys up for a little Q and A from a couple uh, couple sure. people? Yeah. So first question, it looks like it comes from Nikki, and her question is, what would be the best mask to wear in school when you are around ten or fifteen students in the same class? If you cannot social distance, if you can't social distance, um, can can I read? Can or cannot social distance? Cannot. Cannot. Okay. Um, well, for, we're talking about for the teacher, correct? No, I think this is their student. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, long as everybody has a face covering on, you're going to be fairly well protected. I would probably recommend just the basic face covering. Right. Again, the rule of thumb is if you can see through it, it's not it's not going to work. So, like I said, there was a study out west, and they tested a, a face covering like this, a face covering like like Mr. Ralph has there, and an N95. And all three were proven to to protect to protect the individual from from exposing other others to the to any kind of uh, any kind of uh, droplets. Uh, I would not recommend everyone wear N95s. Uh, I mean, these are more for a medical professional. That's if somebody is in right in somebody else's face. Um, but like I said, any any face covering that you can't see through will, will work just fine. As long as long as everybody. Is wearing them right, and I and I think the important thing here for Nikki, and in, in if she's still on or he's still on, I think is if it's a disposable mask, make sure that you have enough to get you through the day. You don't want to be taking it on and putting it t putting it on, taking it off over and over again. You it's disposable for a reason, so to get rid of it and have an additional one in your pocket, you may have to change that disposable mask four, five, six, seven times a day. Okay. Face masks such as the the you know the cotton one that that I have, it has filters in it. But the important thing here to remember is, I can't just go two or three weeks wearing the same masks. I have to replace the filter. I have to wash this. So I guess the most important thing, Nikki, is either mask is good enough. Make sure that you're disposing and replacing the disposable masks and cleaning the other masks if you are choosing to wear something that's a little bit more comfortable or made of a a material. I probably wouldn't go the route. If you cannot socially distance with just a piece of T-shirt that covers your mouth, um, the ones that we use at the museum that are made of that, you know, uh, other type of material, I think are, are suffice. But again, not really comfortable. 
you're going to be sitting in a classroom six to seven hours a day. I think you want something that's a little comfortable. So Tim alluded to something that's very important that I hope people understood is making sure it fits. All our faces are different. We are born differently. Some of us have big schnozzles like me, big old beards, okay? You want a mask that fits you, is appropriate to keep you safe and everybody else safe, and hey, you know what? Maybe throw a little design on there. Makes makes you a little bit different. Makes you know it makes an interesting conversation. Hey, where'd you get your mask at? I think that's important too. You know, we can still protect ourselves and sort of be fashionable at the same time. I think there's a combination. Right. Everyone is wearing a mask. So, I, as a, as as a teacher, I, I would recommend just educating the kids on you know you should wear your mask. You shouldn't just wear it. You shouldn't wear it like. Like this, and it's it. And take, they should take it very seriously. You shouldn't wear it. You know, if you're going to take it off, and leave it off. Don't don't do that. Make sure you're taking it off. Make sure you're taking it off by your by your air loops. So, right. you know, I think education is the key, and also like it, like Ralph said, is keeping it clean, having an extra mask. If they're going to take their mask off to eat lunch, uh, take it off. Sit on sit it on their desk on a clean area. When you put your mask on, make sure your hands are clean. Yep. And when you put it, when you go to put it back on again, you sanitize your hands again. You really have to thought processing everything now. I know it's hard, and I know you know we're in a society now where sometimes change is a, is a, is hard to accept, right? But I think it's the only constant in the world, right? Change is the only constant, and the quicker that you can adapt, the quicker you can move forward. Um, at children, it's going to be a little bit more of a, an opportunity for you to do something a little bit more effective. Kids are notorious for, you know, sneezing and coughing and rubbing their nose and touching their face and their eyes. And we have to be very coherent about what we're doing with our hands. It's our dirty. It's the dirtiest part. Right. Of our exactly. So that bring that's that's some great points. So uh, let's go to the next question. Next question is here we go. My daughter has a breathing problem and has been hard to find a mask that would fit and breathe through. What what would be your suggestion? That's a great question. It's an absolutely great question. Yes, like I said, like we said earlier, we're not medical professionals. So I, what I would do is consult with with your doctor. Um, I know I for people who wear glasses, it's not a breathing issue. But sometimes, if you get a mask like this, you can see the one I showed you earlier. Uh, this is not N95, but it, it has the ports. This makes it a little bit easier to breathe, which is good. It protects you. However you're not, it's not offering protection to, to people around you. So um, again, that's a difficult question to answer. Um, I, I would probably talk to, to a doctor for, for that one. Right, and I think ultimately it's finding, Paul, something, something that fits. Um, I know the mask that I have here, um, one of the things that was an issue with the students that I was talking with, one of the things that they had an issue with was the mask touching their lips. So I'm assuming that if there's a breathing issue as well, you would need the mask to not only protect your face, but be away from your nose and your mouth so that you could breathe appropriately. So I will say that this mask that I have um, gives me the ability to talk um, and have a, a little bit of an easier time breathing. But again, I allude to Tim, and I think it's something that you probably want to look a little bit more thoroughly into, making sure that that mask fits, fits, um, and is away from uh, the nose and the mouth. But I think ultimately I would allude to more of a doctor on this one. Uh, um, facial, facial like this would, would possibly be a good option. Like I said earlier, however, it's not going to provide you, it's not, it's not going to provide a type of protection on a face covering. Right. And I think your, your daughter has to be very transparent in the fact that like trying on several different types of masks and being very honest, like this one works. And I feel good when I'm wearing it, but I don't like it. I, this one makes me have a harder time breathing. I think this is this is where we go back to the educating, and the students can sometimes be the educator. I don't like this mask because I'm having a hard time breathing. Maybe it's not just her. Maybe she can be an advocate for everybody in the instance that specific masks just aren't working well. So she her voice can be heard through the community. If maybe she can decide, and this is where I'm going to come in as the educator and a part of Oh Wow is. Maybe we can help design a mask that helps you breathe a little bit better. Um, I'd love to, to sit in a room with a bunch of students digitally uh, and talk about what masks may work a little bit more better for a student 
uh, and maybe we could design a mask and maybe we could patent this thing and, and it could be your idea. <laughs> yeah. Possibility, like a yeah. It's a little bit easier to breathe, um, but it's something that she could try. It's still a mask. It's still, I think there's right now, there's still a lot of ports like this to be worn. Um, but that's something that, I, like I said, I would just try it out. Yep. Yeah. I think you're very open to, to deciding on this one. Well, I, I think, and just to kind of follow up is, and the best thing for Paul is to kind of sit with his daughter, not knowing how old she is, but I'm thinking she's probably a K to 12 student that she needs to just try on a variety of masks, the cotton ones, the ones that fit them and kind of get one of these that from fabric, um, there are plenty out there right now that you can buy that are cotton slash polyester that are really thin, but can, you can breathe and stuff like that. And just really try on a variety of different ones and then kind of elimination. Yeah. I, I think again, it, it's an advocate. She can, her adv advocacy for, you know, having a, an issue with, with having to breathe could, you know, maybe some people don't feel comfortable talking about it. And she could be a big advocate in this instance for people who do have a breathing problem. I mean, cause ultimately wearing no mask at all, again, increases that risk, not only for us, but for everybody else. So we, we, we have to kind of find a, a medium ground there, right? Finding something that's better for her, that it can help her breathe, but it can also protect, you know, everybody else too. Yeah. I, I think that solves it up. And, and so, but Ralph and Tim, it's always a pleasure. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know that we kind of put this together that we really wanted to educate uh, the public and our viewers and, and to really, Always welcome on my podcast for anything you would like, announcements. And I know me, me and Mr. Ralph will be working on some stuff for fall. So uh, follow up. And uh, Tim's always a pleasure uh, seeing you. Thank you for everyone for joining us tonight. Check out other podcasts and interviews at anthonyvspano.com. Be safe and God bless. 